Hi, Chag Sameach. For today's daily inspiration, I thought I would share some of the readings contained in the Haggadah that my family uses on Passover. Uh, it's called A Night to Remember, the Haggadah of Contemporary Voices. When I was choosing a Haggadah to use at, in my home for my family seders, I chose this one in part because of those contemporary voices. These readings, poems, and um, passages uh, give us a lot to think about um, in vis-a-vis -vis the themes of the Seder, and it challenges us to ask questions and think outside the box about these themes. So I thought I would share a handful of my favorite readings from this Haggadah. Um, so here we go. The first one is by one of my favorite Jewish poets. Uh, her name is Marge Piercy, and she wrote a poem called Magid, and this appears in the section of the Seder where we're telling the story, in the Magid section of the Haggadah, where we're telling the story of the Exodus. Magid by Marge Piercy. The courage to let go of the door, the handle. The courage to shed the familiar walls whose very stains and leaks are comfortable as the little moles of the upper arm. Stains that recall a feast, a child's naughtiness, a loud battering storm that, shaped, that slapped the roof hard, pouring through. The courage to abandon the graves dug into the hill, the small bones of children and the brittle bones of the old whose marrow hunger had stolen. The courage to desert the tree planted and only begun to bear. The riverside where promises were shaped. The street where their empty pots were broken. The courage to leave the place whose language you learned as early as your own, whose customs, however dangerous or demeaning, bind you like a halter you have learned to pull inside, to move your load the land fertile with the blood spilled on it, the roads mapped and annotated for survival, the courage to walk out of the pain that is known into the pain that cannot be imagined, mapless, walking into the wilderness, going barefoot with a canteen into the desert, stuffed in the stinking hold of a rotting ship, sailing off the map into dragon's mouths. Cafe, India, Siberia, Goldena, Medina, leaving bodies by the way like abandoned treasure. So they walked out of Egypt. So they bribed their way out of Russia under loads of straw. So they steamed out of the bloody, smoking charnel house of Europe on overloaded freighters, forbidden all ports. Out of pain into death or freedom or a different painful dignity into squalor and politics. We Jews are all born, born of wanderers with shoes under our pillows and a memory of blood that is ours raining down. We honor only those Jews who changed tonight, those who chose the desert over bondage, who walked into the strange and became strangers and gave birth to children who could look down on them, standing on their, sh on, their sh on their shoulders for having been slaves. We honor those who let go of everything but freedom, who ran, who revolted, who fought, who became other by saving themselves. The next piece I'll share is by the famous novelist Chaim Potok, who was also a rabbi. It's in the same section of the Seder, and he begins with the words, you cannot navigate without a point of origin. I don't think you can be fully a member of the Jewish people and creatively a member of humanity without knowing who you yourself are. The only way you achieve a deep sense of self is to know your own beginnings. That's why Torah is important to the Jews. Torah is a Jew's sense of self, the beginning of it the foundation stones of it. Then you can pick and choose, quarrel with it, discard this 
accept that, but at least know where the shoreline is before you begin to row away from it. If you are rowing and there is no shoreline at all, then you're navigating blind, and to navigate blind is to live in dread. The next piece I'll share is by the first Prime Minister of Israel, David Ben-Gurion. This is in the Halachma section. It's the section where we hold up the Masta and we talk about how this is the bread of affliction. And uh, obviously Ben-Gurion wrote this a while ago, so he makes reference to Jews in Soviet Russia um, before the Soviet Union uh, broke up. So he calls it the Jewish Mayflower. 300 years ago, a ship called the Mayflower set sail to the New World. This was a great event in the history of England. Yet, I wonder if there is one Englishman who knows at what time the ship set sail. <clears throat> do the English know how many people embarked on this voyage? What quality of bread do they eat? Yet, more than 3,300 years ago, before the Mayflower set sail, the Jews left Egypt. Every Jew in the world, even in America or Soviet Russia, knows on exactly what date they left, the 15th of the month of Nisan. Everyone knows what kind of bread the Jews ate, matzah. Even today, the Jews worldwide eat matzah on the 15th of Nisan. They retell the story of the Exodus and all the troubles Jews have endured since being exiled, saying, this year slaves, next year free. This year here, next year in Jerusalem, in Zion, in Eretz Yisrael. That is the nature of the Jews. And I will continue by sharing a piece by Amos Oz, famous Israeli novelist. And he, this is in the section where we move from talking about slavery to talking about liberation, or especially spiritual liberation. And he calls this Jewish by choice. We should ask ourselves what to do with our historic inheritance. In every generation, Jews have had to make a decision to remain Jewish. The people have survived for thousands of years because millions of Jews over dozens of generations have made personal decisions to uphold their identity. The Torah, the mitzvot, the commandments, the languages spoken, the collective memory, the ways of life, the creative works, all these were sustained first and foremost by the decision that every Jew made privately to stay a Jew and not to leave. Identity has meaning only when it can be abandoned, only when a person is allowed to leave, only when each individual makes the decision freely to keep his or her identity and not to change it. And I will read one more poem by Marge Piercy, and this is in the section of the Haggadah where we get to eat the matzah. And this poem is called Matzah. Flat you are as a doormat and as homely. No crust, no glaze. You lack a cosmetic glow. You break with a snap. You are dry as a twig split from an oak in mid midwinter. You are bumpy as a mud basin in a drought. Square as a slab of pavement. You have no inside to hide raisins or seeds. You are pale as the full moon, pocked with craters. What we see is what we get, honest, plain, dry, shining with nostalgia as if baked with light instead of heat. The bread of flight and haste in the mouth you promise home. And finally, I'll conclude with a passage written by Nama Kelman she was the first Israeli woman to be ordained a reform rabbi. Next, this coming Friday night, by Zoom, uh, Sally Prusand, who was the first American reform woman rabbi, um, will speak at, at Temple, so I encourage you to join us for that. Um, but this is a, 
as I said, by Rabbi Nama Kelman, first woman ordained in Israel by the Hebrew Union College. And this is at the end of the Seder when we say the blessing after the meal. She writes, our mouths will fill with laughter. Being Jewish has taught me how to laugh. First and foremost, to laugh at myself and at my situation. More important, to laugh in order to act in the world. This is not to say we are to make fun of someone or make light of our fate. Rather, one is not to take oneself too seriously, but to take one's responsibilities very seriously. Laughter opens the door to hope and healing. It opens up new possibilities. Listen to what's funny to children and it will re reveal a new world and a new generation. The first Jewish child born was called Yitzchak, which means one will laugh. Laughter. We pack it in our luggage. We season our Friday night soup with it. Often it is mixed with tears. We fought despair relentlessly. Laster, laughter is one of our secret weapons. And with that, I wish you a Chag Sameach, a happy Passover, filled with laughter, even during these trying times. Stay safe and healthy and wash your hands.